Okay, so um, again, this is part two of the lecture on lecture layout planning models and design algorithms. So we covered the first portion of this lecture uh, last week. It's basically, what we went through these uh, layout planning models, and we started covering some of the algorithms that can help us improve some of the layouts and also con construct new layouts for a facility. Before we get into the material, again, we are looking at the second objective for the class right now, uh, learn formulation models and analytical procedures for the study of facility layout planning. And we already covered the first three bullets of this uh, lecture, so we are now looking at the algorithm approaches. And again, the lecture objective is for you to understand the interaction between the light layout planning models and the design algorithms and how they relate to facilities planning. So we talk about this. I, I thought it was a good idea to, to just mention it one more time. So layout procedures presented in this previous section of this or part one of this lecture provided a framework to construct or improve a layout, but they do not provide a formal procedure or algorithm for some of the critical steps associated with the layout design and evaluation. So we cover um, we talk about the Apple procedure, and we also talk about this one specifically, the systematic layout planning. or SLP. And we saw how the tools that we discussed, um, the front two chart, and some other tools related to help you plan for the layout. So that's the uh, systematic layout planning. But now we're looking at we're looking at the algorithms uh, from the algorithms perspective. And the models and algorithms we present in this section provide us with the uh, with an objective criteria to facilitate the evaluation of several layout alternatives. that emerge in the process. And we talk about how we can classify these algorithms in terms of the information that we need to uh, use them. So we can classify them um, qualitative on quantitative flow data. And some algorithms accept both relationship and from two charts. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. And um, they can also be classified according to the objective function. And we speak brief, spoke briefly about this in class last, uh, last week. And the reason I'm showing this one more time is because today we're going to show a, a mathematical model that's using some of this notation to find the best uh, layout or the optimal layout for a facility. So that's the third um, method that we're going to cover today. And we're going to talk about it very briefly. Um, but for now, we, we discussed the graph method on Wednesday, and today we're going to cover these two, craft, M MCraft, and MIP. And we're going to start with CRAFT, and CRAFT stands for Computerized Related uh, Allocation of Facility Technique. That's what uh, CRAFT stands for. 
and this is an improvement algorithm uh, so you're gonna have a initial layout as an input something like this um, it uses a discrete representation you're gonna have to use a from two metric as your input uh, is distance based objective and allows you to do pairwise exchange meaning that you can switch two departments at, its, uh, one, uh, at the time so you cannot switch uh, multiple departments at the same time you're going to be switching two uh, departments and so on so um, as I mentioned these algorithms are, are algorithms that are developed by engineers just like uh, you're going to be in the future and they basically look at the, the problem and they try to come up with solutions for those problems so this is uh, an algorithm that was uh, developed in 1963 and is still uh, useful by these three people Armour, Buffa and Bowman. Um, Kraft is a tool used to help improve the existing layout of the facilities and the facility is improved by switching two or three departments to help arrange the facility in an optimal floor plan this algorithm or methodology will require you to have three different things as input the first one is the from to chart that you learn how to build in class and you work on that you also uh, did the lab on, on that particular type of chart um, the cost matrix this is basically telling you how much it's going to cost you to move uh, the materials from one station to the other or from one department to the other this is input from from the problem and the distances and these are determined for a given layout and an initial layout so basically what the way it works is you're gonna have a representation of the of the layout um, most of the time this is going to be presented in um, square paper so you're going to be able to sh determine the distances the rectilinear distances from one space to the other and I'm going to show you that in, in a second so um, this is going back to the objective function so we have two type of, of algorithms as we mentioned we can classify that according to the objective function so this one in particular is going to try to minimize the transportation cost and in order to minimize that we're going to look at the transportation cost in the following way so the transportation cost equals flow times distance times the unit cost so you're going to be looking at this at uh, the multiplication of these three things in order to find your transportation cost so the flow is the amount of uh, materials that you're going to be moving between departments the distance is obviously the distance between the two departments and the unit cost is how much it costs you to move those units 
So we are going to try to minimize that cost in our algorithm. Uh, craft is a path-oriented method. And the final layout is dependent on the initial layout. So again, this is an improvement algorithm. We're going to start with something with a given layout, and we're going to try to improve that layout using the algorithm. Um, so the solution that we get at the end is going to be dependent on the initial layout provided by the, by the company. This algorithm requires the assumption that move cost is independent of the equipment utilization meaning that we are not taking into account the costs of using the equipment and move cost are linearly related to the length of the move so the longer the distance the more it's going to cost you to uh, move the knife. So now we have a general understanding of, of the algorithm itself, what it's going to try to do in terms of minimizing the cost of moving this unit between departments, what are some of the assumptions, uh, we know that it's an improvement algorithm, meaning that you have an initial layout before uh, you get started. You know the information that you're going to need in order to use this algorithm. Um, something that I can tell you right now is based on the projects that we've been getting for our uh, senior design course uh, from industry, at least for the industrial engineering um, program, uh, I, I will say half of them will ask for uh, improvement in their, in their lay layouts. Um, most of the time the students end up using this algorithm for, for those projects. So this is something that is very useful. Uh, the steps of the algorithm are here. So the first thing you're going to do is to determine the department centroids and if you're familiar with um, statics, mechanics you know how to compute the centroids um, so this is basically where the, the center of the, of the department and if you're considering the shape <laughs> and so on um, Calculate the interdepartment rectilinear distances. So that what that means is if you have let's say something like this. You have four departments, and you want to know the distance between A and D. The rectilinear distance will be in a rectilinear fashion. So you'll move horizontally and then vertically. You will not go in a diagonal form. Okay. Um, then calculate
calculate the initial cost of the layout by multiplying the from tooth matrix with the cost matrix. And again, the cost matrix is going to be given, or this is something that needs to be provided, or you're going to have to find the, the cost from, from your company or for the problem. But that's an input. So you need that input in order to uh, find the cost of the layout. And then the algorithm craft consider all the possible two-way or three-way department X changes and identify the best one. So you're going to test all the possible switch between departments and then you're going to identify the best one. And that one is the one that you're going to uh, select. Then you're going to update the layout. So you're going to move that department to the, if you're switching departments, then you're going to relocate those departments to the new positions. You're going to update the layout and calculate the new department centroids. And those are the steps. have five steps. What you're going to do in the last one is basically you're going to repeat the process. So the above procedure is repeated until no further reduction in the cost can be obtained. Okay, so the steps one more time, you start with the initial the given layout, you find the centroids for each one of the departments, then you're going to uh, calculate the distances, rectilinear distances from one department to the other, and that's for all the options, but for all the departments, and then you're going to calculate the initial cost of the layout, multiplying the prompt to matrix uh, with the cost matrix. So the prompt two matrix will contain the distances from one department to the other. Um, and after that, then you're going to start switching departments until you find the best exchange. Update the layout, calculate the new department centroids, and then repeat the process until you find no, uh, no better improvement or no better layout. Any questions? So we're going to work on a, an example now. Uh, we're going to try to apply these steps to a problem. So that's what we have on the next slide. So this is the problem. This is the layout that we have. We are provided with the initial layout. We have eight departments. And this is what I mentioned. You have a square uh, look type look of, of paper that you can use to find the centroids easily. So those dots that you see are uh, the centroids for each one of the departments. And what we need to do now is to find uh, the location of those in terms of X and Y. So this is our initial information. What else do we need to use the, the algorithm? cost, correct? So we're going to have a cost matrix for the movement of materials between departments. And then we need to compute several things from, from this uh, initial layout. So the first thing you're going to have to do is to find the centroids. So I'm going to use this point as my 0, 0 
coordinate. And then my distances or the distances to find the centers are gonna be positive. So that's gonna be my reference point. So for department one, I have one, two, three. So that's X. This is X and Y. And then one, two, three. So that's our first department. Then for the second one, we have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So that's X. And then one, two. Simple, right? shape for so let's do one more department number three we have 13 14 15 16 so this is 16.5 give you the the rest of the centroids so for four we have 9.5 and 7 for five we have 3 and 7 6 we have 9.5 and 11 for seven 1.5 and 10 and for 8 we have 4.5 and 10 and you can double check those numbers um, see 4.5 So that's the first step. Any questions? That's a good question. Um, the question is if we need to start in this quarter or to find the, the centroids. The answer is no. You can choose any this, any one of the corners, but you have to be consistent. So if you choose this one, then use that for all the distances. Any other question? Yes. At the end, the, what you want is the distance. So, um, and for the purpose of the of the exam, I will let you know use this as your reference point, or to keep everything consistent. Um, but yes, you can use any corner to find those distances, as long as you are consistent with all the the departments. Okay, so step number number two, we have the centroids, is to find the distances. So 
we have um, a matrix here that we're going to complete to find those instances. Let's see if I can take this information from here somehow. So can I take this? Okay, so you're gonna have to find the distance for this. Yes, and I'm just drawing the box on those. I think I forgot to see. Yes, so I, I sort of have to provide you view with this initially. I think put this on the first uh, slide of the of the example here, and the reason why we need that here is because we're gonna have flow between some departments, not all the departments will have flow. Okay, so that cost matrix is the one that is gonna allow you to identify which are the departments that are gonna have some uh, flow. So that's not here, but, um, so that's why I'm choosing to find the distances between those, only those boxes that are highlighted, because those are the departments that are gonna have flow or going to have some type of movement of material. Okay, so we're going to find distances for those. Just make a note to identify this. So I'm green. Departments. Having of materials. So we're going to start with the distance between 1 and 3. So for that one, you will go from one centroid to the other. So it's going to be rectilinear distances. So we start with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 
it's going to be 13.5 and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 so that distance is 18.5 Okay, remember that we are using rectilinear distances. Okay, so we move from the centroid from one to three. That is this distance. Let me use a different color for the next one. So now we're going to move from 1 to 7. So that's 1, 1 and a half. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that's 8.5. Does that make sense? Okay, so you're going to repeat the process for all these departments that have some type of flow between them. So let me do one more. So the next one will be 2 to 8. So 2 to 8 it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 so 8.5 then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 so that's 16.5 Any questions? Okay, so let me fill the table. So this is fourteen point five, eight point five. 8, 11, 4.5, 10, 4, 8.5, 8, which is going to be the same table that you have on, on the next slide. But I just wanted to show you how to get those numbers. Any questions? So again, this table. this same table with the distances and now we have the cost matrix or reward matrix this is what's telling you the flow between departments so if you move um, units from 1 to 3 it's going to cost you 20 units $20 uh, if you move 1 to 7 it's 2 move from 2 to 8 1 and so on. So using that information we can calculate the initial cost of the layout by multiplying the from to matrix with the cost matrix and that cost will be 
pass equals distance times the reward. So for this case we have 20 times 18.5 plus 2 times 8.5 plus 1 times 16.5 plus 2 times 14.5 plus 1 times 8.5 plus 2 times 11 plus 1 times 4.5 plus 10 times 14.5 plus 5 times 10 and finally 2 times 8. So the cost of that layout is 678.5. This times this, this times this, and so on. Any questions how to get that number? Simple. Okay, so you calculate the initial cost of the layout by multiplying the from two matrix with the cost matrix. Cost matrix is given. This one came from the previous slide. So this is your from two matrix. So now we have the cost of the initial layout. Now we need to go and see, uh, look at the exchanges from the department. So this is the information that we have. So only equal areas or adjacent departments are principal exchange for this algorithm. So you're going to have to find um, those areas that are the same and also those departments that are adjacent to each other. So we can look at departments one and two, and that's a feasible exchange. So when you do that, you can switch the location of the centroids. So we start with one and two. That's our initial list of this is our initial layout and if you switch one and two which is this one those two departments are adjacent to each other so that's a feasible exchange and when you switch that you'll see that these uh, numbers are switched so now we have the centroids um, switch. If you look at the exchange of one and three, that's invisible because the departments are not adjacent to each other. So you have one here and three here. And then we have one and four. And those are adjacent, so you can also switch those two. And you see how the centroids for those two are exchanged. So craft exchange centroids first and then calculates a new table of distances then lay out new cost we evaluate all the possible exchanges and the one with the most savings is selected 
and then the centroid distances and the echo layout are updated. So when you switch these two, looks like they don't have the same area. But you can fit them, that's why they need to be adjacent to each other. Because when you put them into the new layout format, then you can change the chip. So one will be now taking the location of four, and four taking the location of four. So if we exchange departments one and four, Um, this is how the centroids are now. So this is coming from here. So we exchange one and four. We have the new distances We need to compute the new distances So now from 1 to 4 And we need to compute also the new update the centroids So with the new area, again, this kind of complicates the finding of the centroids because now you have this uh, weird shape here. Um, so that's why we're getting these decimal points for that uh, update of the centroids. But for department one, very easy to find because that's skipping their um, square shape. So we exchange the department we find the new distances and we update the, the centroids. And using this information, now we can compute the cost after exchanging the departments. So the cost again is going to be equal to the distance times the cost. And for that we have 20 times 7.5 plus 2 times 11.5 plus 1 times 16.5 plus 2 times 14.5 plus 1 times 11.07 plus 2 times 8.43 plus 1 times 4.5 plus 10 times 4 plus 10 times 5 plus 2 times 7.43 and that's giving us a total of 355.79 So if you compare that cost with the initial cost of the initial layout, that's uh, almost a 50% um, savings. So we can compute that savings from the initial layout, 678 minus 355.79, divided by the initial cost, 678.5, that's 47.56% savings just by switching one department. Any questions? Yes, sir. Point 
That's a good question. Um, Talking about the shape right. of the department. You know, you reach that little slither, then it doesn't make any difference if you change that. Well, yes, that's, that's something that will depend on the facility. Uh, for instance, that can be used as a aisle, or you can have it as a storage. So it will depend on what type of product you are moving. Yeah, but that's true. If, if you are just putting machines, maybe that would not be a feasible shape to have for a department. Yeah, but that's that's correct. That will depend on the facility to answer your question. It's a good point. Any any other questions? Could you tell us which ones to switch or just to figure that out? Um, this is that's another good question. The question is if I'm gonna let you know which departments to switch. Um, for testing purposes, I'm gonna have to tell you what to do because it, this will take a long time to complete if you are doing every exchange possible. Uh, but when you're doing this in, in a company, for instance, you're gonna have to evaluate every possible exchange. Um, so that's why you need to know the steps. Most of the time, what you're gonna do as an engineer is to code this, let's say, on Visual Basic or in Excel. So that can, the computer can tell you right away what are the, the solutions. So you will not do this all by hand. But you need to know how, to, how the algorithm works if you want to code it at some point. Okay? Any, any other questions? <coughs> Good. So, So three iterations take us to the final layout. We exchange one and four, exchange um, five and seven, and then five and eight, and the final cost will be 345.29 after doing all the iterations. Any, any questions? Okay, so um, the procedures adopted by this algorithm determine the transportation cost of each department uh, interchange, then select and implement the department uh, departmental interchange that offers the greater reduction in transportation costs, and then repeat the procedures for the new layout until no interchange is able to reduce the transportation cost. So, you're going to perform, in general, these are the, the steps of the algorithm. So you're going to repeat this process until you find no further um, improvement. So some of the good things about this algorithm, um, one, evaluates many exchanges very quickly. Um, the initial layout can be captured accurately. And the algorithm allows for flexible department shapes. Dummy departments. And let me talk about that really quick. So dummy departments, let's say you have an area that is bigger than the area that you need for all your departments. If you want to apply this algorithm, then you can use what is called a dummy department. So that basically, it's going to tell you this area is not going to be used. Uh, but we're going to consider that there is an department there uh, just for uh, the state purposes of applying the algorithm. So you can apply this algorithm if even if you have a larger area than the one that you need for your facility. Um, that space can be used later for something else. Okay. Um, it allows you to do some to have some of the departments fixed. Meaning that if you don't want to move one of the departments, you can do that using this algorithm. 
and then also can be applied to non rectangular buildings because the algorithm basically uses the centroids of the of the departments to compute the cost so you can apply this to uh, non rectangular buildings some of the disadvantages of this algorithm One of the one of you already highlighted this um, results in all department shapes. So sometimes you might question this is going to be something that is going to be useful for your facility. Uh, it provides a limited exchange options. Remember, you only exchange those departments that are uh, close to each other. And in terms of um, math. This is what we call a greedy algorithm, meaning that the solution that you're going to get is not necessarily the best solution or the optimal solution. Because again, it's going to depend on the initial input that you're going to have from your, uh, from your company. So this is basically <coughs> saying that you have a couple of good solutions, meaning that you're trying to minimize the cost. So let's say this is the cost at this point right now, but since this is a really algorithm, you will not be able to get to this uh, best solution because you are stuck on this one uh, based on your initial uh, shape. And if you're interested about this, I can um, go in more detail about what's, uh, what's going on. But what is important from here is that you're going to get a solution that is not necessarily the best. It's a very good solution, but not the optimal. Um, craft is path dependent. The starting layout makes a difference. So that's related also to the previous point. Okay, so that um, concludes our discussion on, on this algorithm. Uh, for now, I have explained in detail the graph method, the graph methodology, and the craft uh, methodology. Next, I'm going to talk about two other options that are used. Uh, frequently in industry, but we are not going to touch on a detailed way those two algorithms. Just this for um, for your knowledge, in case um, you get to hear about them in the future. So the first one is called Microcraft, which is essentially the same as Craft call it mcraft, except that it can exchange to non-adjacent departments. So that's the major difference. Uh, this layout formation technique allows easy shifting of the departments because the facility is going to be divided into bands. So you're going to have a certain number of bands dividing your uh, space. And the layout is formed starting at the upper left hand corner of the building and sweeping the bands in serpentine, serpentine fashion. So you're going to have this uh, uh, flow that you need to follow. And the algorithm will perform two-way exchanges until no further improvement is achieved. So the idea now is to, to use the concept that we learned from CAP, but now we're going to add some uh, special features, including this uh, band. And it's going to tell you how are you going to perform the exchanges in your algorithm. 
Uh, again, this allows to do no non-adjacent uh, swapping, which is something different also from um, from uh, craft. So here is the the representation. So the idea is to have a certain number of bands. So this one will be one, two. So you're gonna have one, two, three bands. And you're gonna start putting those departments from the left upper corner and below, but you're gonna follow this flow. So you're gonna start from here and then that serpentine uh, fashion, you're gonna be accommodating those departments into the bands. Um, some of the limitations about this algorithm is that it may be hard to fit the existing factory into bands. And the band width is assumed to be the same for all. So as you can see from, from the representation, we have three bands that are uh, of the same width. Uh, a fixed department may float where in certain non equal area departments are exchanged so this is mcraft and some of the limitations of of the algorithm and here we have to an example so we have two fixed departments in this example one and two so these two are not going to be moved. I'm sorry, it's one and seven. So so one and seven. Those are going to stay on the the place they have right now. Um, but the other ones can be uh, switched. Encraft asks for the length and width of the building and the number of bands. And this number of bands is going to be determined according to the area of the, of the departments that you have so you're going to find the best number of bands according to the area of your department. Um, Incres forms a layout by starting at the upper left hand corner and sweeping the bands in, in a serpentine fashion and it follows a particular sequence of department numbers which we will refer as the layout vector or the fill sequence so we're going to use this information to create our layout so in this example we're going to have three bands two of the departments are fixed so these two are fixed and then we're going to start adding those departments um, the layout showing the figure was obtained from the layout vector 17532486, which is the order that this flow, flow is following. And that's our initial layout. This is given, provided to you. So using this information, then you can start doing the swapping. So again, for this algorithm, the, the departments, they don't have to be adjacent to each other. You can swap them, but they need to follow, I mean, the swapping needs to follow this flow. So, um, so in, for this particular example, the, the algorithm will perform four iterations to get the optimal or the best solution. So for the first iteration, we are swapping three and five. So these two, then once you swap these two, you perform another iteration in which you swap three and eight. So three now is going to be in this area. 
eight is in here, so you're swapping these two. Um, four iteration is also related to three and four, and so on. So once you get to this point, then you don't have to perform any other iteration. Um, so for, for the purpose of this algorithm, one more time, just want to give you the steps, provide you with the details, but I'm not gonna be asking questions on solving these uh, algorithms. But you need to be prepared to solve, um, to use the graph methodology in craft. And for craft, I'm gonna let you know what are the swapping that I need to, to do, okay? But again, mcraft is gonna be using some of the information that we learned from, from craft, but there's certain difference between this algorithm and the other one that you need to know, which are the ones that I mentioned earlier. So this is our final layout using mcraft. And then we have one more thing to discuss for the algorithm portion of the, of the class. Uh, for their department allocation. And this is the MIP. Um, the reason that I'm not going in detail here, this is the only methodology that will give you the optimal layout, saying that this there's no better solution than this one. The other two algorithms are greedy, meaning that you can get a best, the best solution provided a initial layout, but that's not necessarily the best solution. With MISIX integer programming, you will provide the details of your facility and they will give you the best solution based on the information. So this is the, the only one that's gonna give you the optimum, the best uh, layout for your facility. But in order to be able to understand it, then you, have, you need to have some um, knowledge on operation research, which I know most of you uh, from manufacturing are not taking that class. So, in case you um, go to graduate school at some point for a master or something, uh, this is something that you're gonna be learning for sure. Um, but the idea is you're gonna have an objective function, some decision variables, and some information, cost, and distance. And you're gonna try to minimize the cost based on that. But here's where things get complicated because you're gonna have to uh, model the information of your facility on using constraints. So you're gonna have to de uh, develop each one of these constraints based on the information that you have from your facility. Once you're able to build the model, then it's just a matter of putting that into a computer. You can solve the model in Excel using the solver or you can solve uh, using uh, any other type of software like Simplex or so on. The difficulty is to create the model. But again, this is making weeks integer programming. Um, this is a methodology that exists there. It's gonna give you the optimal layout. And that concludes our lecture for today. So any, any questions? So from this class, very important for you to understand how to use craft, what are the steps. Very important to understand what are the difference between craft and, and craft. And also um, known that MIP, means Integer Programming, is the only methodology that will give you the optimal solution with the initial information of the layout. Okay, so remember those three things. And remember that you have a homework due on Wednesday, that is on tracks. I'll see you on Wednesday.